Good morning, everyone. Lee Henson, president and founder of Agile Dad, and welcome to today's edition of The Daily Stand-Up. Without any further ado, let's get started. This week, we were originally going to focus on your questions and topics and the things that you wanted to learn about, but I've decided that I wanted to delay by a week, and the purpose behind that is uh, I have lots of those to go through, and I want to make sure that we cover as many of those as we can, and I want to make sure I consolidate and see which one's got the largest amount of traction. So it's not too late for you to send in your idea for an episode of The Daily Stand-Up. You can send those over to learn more at agiledad.com and we'll be happy to take a look at those and get them all together so we can present your ideas here on the podcast. This week, I wanted to focus on self-improvement. I know a lot of people, especially in these trying times, have uh, been struggling with COVID and with all the things that are happening and with uh, self-quarantine and with lots of other issues. And it's just been hard to find a new normal and to have normalcy in our lives, whether it's kids going back to school or whatever the case may be. I thought that it would be a good idea this week to shift our focus and still you know, concentrate on agility. But one of the things that you need to do in order to be agile is you should have a really clear focus on what you can do to improve yourself and sharpen your skill set so that in turn you'll have the ability and capability to assist others and uplift others. So to kick things off, I wanted to talk about a term that many of you may not be familiar with. So in Agile, we all hear a lot about retrospectives and going back and reviewing you know, things that have happened and discussing what can we do to make things better, what went well, and all that good jazz, right? What I want to do today is talk about a term called an introspective. This is where you take an opportunity to really take a look in the mirror, step away from work for a few minutes, and take a look at who you really are. Now, I have some very dear friends that live out in Utah, and one of the things that they do is they choose to meditate in order to focus on where they are and on how they feel spiritually and on what's happening in their lives. And it's a really cool concept because watching them go through the steps of preparation for the state of mind that they're trying to be in and the focus that eventually becomes a lack of focus where you lose yourself and start to discover internally what type of things are really happening so that you can gain better focus and so that you can be better at what you do. And what I can tell you is the results there are incredible. I have another whole group of friends that are from all over the country uh, who are very spiritual in nature and they use the opportunity to connect with a higher power to find who they are and what their purpose is. So I guess the big question here is, what is your purpose? Why are you here? Do you have a sense of purpose? Do you understand you know, what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve? And what I found is that people who have a sense of purpose and people who understand and people who have you know, some type of clear foundation that they're building upon... Those are the ones that tend to be the most successful in their home life, in their marriages, with their families, and or in just relationships in general, and in their uh, work life outside of the home. One of the things that I often hear people say is, you know, don't bring your personal baggage to the office or don't carry with you hard emotions. But the truth is, we as humans who are fragile and gentle do often carry emotions with us where we go and it's hard to compartmentalize and separate those things sometimes i would even venture to say it's not healthy to do that that if you have emotions or you have things that are happening in your life it's important for you to study how you got to that point and to evaluate where you are and what you can do to continue to press forward in a way that's going to uplift you so then you have the capability to uplift others I distinctly remember an experience that I had with one of my daughters when she said to me, you know, this person made me feel this way or this person made me feel angry or I'm upset and this person did this and made me feel this way. And my question to her was, is it possible for anyone to make you feel a certain way? And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but the answer, of course, is no. There's no way someone can make you feel a certain way. You know, people could 
do things conditionally that cause you to react and have those emotions, but they didn't make you feel that way. And even though it might not have been an obvious thing, it was your choice to feel that way. So I guess the big question here is, if I were doing an introspective and I had to boil it down to three questions, what three questions would I ask myself in an introspective, similar to a retrospective, to try to find out where I am today and what's going on, right? And I think that's question number one. Where am I today? Where? How do I feel? Do I feel uplifted? Do I feel on the brink of self-destruct? Do I feel like I'm falling apart? Do I feel like the world around me is a healthy place? Do I feel like I'm being subjected to so much external media that it's driving me to uh, my wit's end? You know, where where am I? And, you know, where am I today? And just do a real good solid assessment of where you are, whether you use the smiley face scale like they use in the emergency room or whether you just write in a journal and record your thoughts. It's important to kind of know where you are as step one of an introspective. Where am I? How do I feel? What's going on in my life? You know, don't be afraid to journal or keep a diary. Make sure you understand where you are and what's going on. Once you know where you are, the second question obviously is where am I trying to go? And it doesn't necessarily mean set huge goals or big long-term goals or even physical goals that you can mark on a chart and see if they're achievable. When I say, where am I trying to go? What I'm trying to say here is, am I trying to do something in my life internally to improve who I am? Do I need to move in one direction or another? Am I too sensitive to the things around me? Do I need to become more desensitized? Or or am I not sensitive to the things around me and I need to become more aware? Uh, in the world today, I think they call that uh, the awakening, be more woke, right? And I feel like it's a place for you to visit and say, hey, you know, in the state of all the things that are happening around me, where am I? You know, Without letting the other things influence you, where am I? And where do I need to be, right? And I think that those two questions are probably the most important. The third question you must ask yourself, once you understand where you are, and once you understand, you know, okay, where you hope to head, where you need to improve, where you need to be, third question becomes, what actionable steps am I going to take to get there? What am I going to do to begin this journey of self-improvement? And for some people, it's just a road of discovery. For other people, it's a road of focus. For some people, it's just a road of understanding. But no matter how you get there, I think it's just important that you leverage an introspective to see where your mind is and where your heart is so that you can then in turn try your best to lose yourself in the service of others. I think that once you figure out that you can adapt, that you can shift focus, that you can become the person that you want to be, that it's not impossible and it's not out of your reach, that's when you start doing things to improve. I hope this initial session was useful for you. We're going to continue the week on the same topic of self-improvement and hopefully give you some tidbits, some nuggets to help you be a better person, to help you, to help uplift you personally so that you can uplift your family and uplift the teams that you work with. As always, we invite you to visit AgileDad.com where you can learn more about these type of topics or anything Agile related. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay Agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.